What's up, Rebels? Welcome to another Location Rebel case study. Today, we're talking to my buddy, Michael, who joined Location Rebel Academy about a year ago. He's had a bunch of ups and downs, but lately he's been having a lot of success with the course. Uh, he's got a really cool background with some of the things that he's done in the past and some of the things he's working on doing now. So I'm really excited to share a story, hear a little bit about how he got started with freelance writing, if it's been a positive or a negative experience and everything that's been going on. So Michael, dude, thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, chat today. Of course, man. <laughs> um, so I want to back up a little bit. You had a pretty interesting story where you used to live in Nicaragua and you, you know, helped manage a Irish bar and all of these crazy things. What was it like living down there? And how did that experience lead you to want to start building an online business? Um, yeah, so I moved down there. First, I was at, at college or in university, and I was studying engineering and just hated it. So I decided I'd take a break and go do something different. And I had that opportunity. Uh, to go work down in the bar in Nicaragua, which I was doing for, you know, three or four years. And yeah. it was a crazy experience. Um, one thing it really taught me was I didn't want to really have to deal with uh, a business with a physical location. Um, yep. I basically became, you know, an, a slave to the business. And I spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours in one building um, in a beautiful country that I actually... I got to see a little bit more after the fact, but while I was working, I really did not get to travel or do much of the things that I thought I would be doing when I was in Nicaragua. So it was a great experience, but it also, um, I always say that uh, the main thing I learned through it was a lot of the things that I don't want or what not to do. So that's, that's exactly how I feel about the last real job I had as financial analyst. It was like, I learned a lot, but most of the things that I learned were slit. I just didn't want to wear a suit and tie. I didn't want to work in the finance industry. And it's yeah. interesting how I think so many people think, oh, I'm going to go to this like foreign place and all I'm going to do is travel and have all these adventures. And that's, it was a little bit like that when I moved to Thailand, where I go down there and I certainly had a lot of adventures, but for the most part, most of my days, like I was just sitting there working on the business or you were sitting yeah. there working on the job. So I think there's yeah. a little bit of grass is always greener mentality with some of those travel things. But absolutely. Really, I, I think people, you know, they go to these beautiful places and open a business thinking it'll be easy. And it is a it is a challenge just like it would be anywhere else in the world. So you might as well do it the way you want to. <laughs> totally. And so with that in mind, you know, you came back, you know, you've been kind of trying to figure out what the next you know steps are. About a year ago, you joined Location Rebel Academy. What was the decision that kind of led you to that point? Why did you decide, hey, I want to you know pursue an online business? So actually, I think I first joined in like 2018, okay. three years ago, probably. Um, and I joined because I saw the the YouTube and, and blogging content that you were putting out and yep. had been thinking, you know, what my next move would be. I knew that I wanted to continue to see different places and uh, needed to be earning money along the way. And I had other uh, online business ambitions. So when I first saw the site, it seemed, um, I think the thing that I, that struck me the most about it is it, like, you're, you're very practical in the way you yeah. explain things and, you know, it's pragmatic and it's not sugar coated and you're not going to make a million dollars in seven days or whatever. Totally. Uh, so that's really what hooked me in on it. And I've always written, so I figured I could, uh, I could probably do a decent job with it. Um, so I started then, but you know, no matter, no matter how exciting an idea is, it still requires, you know, a level of discipline and work on end totally. that I apparently wasn't willing to put in at that time. So <laughs> I drifted away from it, went and had some other crazy, difficult travel experiences. Um, ended up hitchhiking Costa Rica and totally broke in Panama and all of these different things that could have been avoided if I was <laughs> uh, freelance writing from the start. So, Hey, sometimes home, you have to have those experiences to realize like, okay, maybe I do need to pursue this a little bit more so I can have more of those crazy experiences. Totally, man. Yeah. And so I, I came back from that trip. Um, it still took me about a year. I, I was pursuing other interests and, uh, 
uh, doing different education certifications and stuff for coaching and psychology. And um, that's still a big passion of mine. But again, another uh, actually quarantine happened. And we yep. were all locked in our houses and I was working on the coaching front, um, which is a, a good business, but something that I wanted to take my time with and not, uh, you know, not have all the financial pressure or the immediate financial pressure that um, was there at the time. So that's when I circled back to Location Rebel and uh, joined the academy, got started with it and you know, uh, did not necessarily learn from the first round. It took me quite a while again to, um, you know, sit down and really just do everything that you outline in the course. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about that real quick. So like, you know, the first six, nine months of you jumping back in, you're like good intentions. You started, you're like, yep, I want to do this, but you just could never quite get yourself to do it. What was it the the fact you thought the work was boring was it you know there were other things that were a priority because i know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to get excited about this and they're going to join and then they might like have those same struggles so i'm just curious if you have thoughts on like what it was that was keeping you from really just kind of following the program to a t and moving forward with it absolutely i think in retrospect i have you know i have other ideas and goals and ambitions and places i want to get to in my life and um I think I took the idea of like, as you call it, a bridge business a little too literally or basically, you know, I was treating it as a means to an end. I needed to yeah. start writing to get to what I actually wanted to do. And um, and then, you know, what I wanted to do was there are so many things, so many ideas that I'm, you know, I'm chasing the next shiny object that crosses my mind. And before I know it, six months have passed. I haven't made progress on my own stuff that I'm actually interested in. And I haven't made progress on the <laughs> uh, freelance writing either. So what really changed for me was when I stopped looking at it as a means to an end and started looking at it as like, okay, these are the first steps on the way towards what I actually want to do, not like a inconvenient stop along the way. Totally. And as soon as I started doing that, it, everything became easier and it's not at all inconvenient. I'm actually enjoying it. Um, yeah. You know, it might not be always the most exciting content that I'm writing, but there is definitely something to be said about um, building something that's yours in a consistent way, uh, regardless of, you know, what it actually is. Totally. And so you jumped in, you know, two or three months ago and basically like, tell me, you know, you kind of, went into the freelance writing blueprint and said, okay, I'm just going to follow this to a T. I'm going to do what yeah. you said and see what happens. And I know you've sent a few hundred kind of like cold LOIs. You had a pretty interesting strategy where you're just like, I'm going to start in my hometown um, in Bellevue and then just kind of work, you know, farther South or Bellingham. Sorry, I get too yeah, confused Bellingham. all the time. Um, and then just kind of work your way south and yeah. you're at like three, 400 emails and you like haven't even gotten to Seattle yet. So tell <laughs> yeah. me like what that process has looked like. And once you started that process, um, you know, have you had success? Have you been able to get writing work? Yeah. Um, exactly. So when I started, I, I basically decided, uh, another like important mental shift I made was like, this is a job. If I, yep. if I'm not going to be doing freelance writing and treating it as a job, I'm going to actually have to get a job. Totally. And, I like and then that. your instructions and your blueprints were like my boss. So yeah. <laughs> whatever it said, I did. And I did it, you know, as much as I was told to do it. And, yep. uh, you know, I'm still, I could still definitely do better and I'm working on keeping myself on a schedule like a blue collar worker. But um, that shift of like, this is the job. Otherwise I have to get another one. That I'm not going to like was huge. So as soon as I started doing that, I, I picked my favorite cafe and I set a time in the morning that I had to be there by. Yep. And yep. I just got to work. I started um, first started building out the email list. Like you said, I, I started in my hometown and I found um, I found that to be really successful because you have you already have that connection of living in the same town. It's like instant um, rapport, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's instant rapport, and and you can, you know, 
you see the clients that those companies are working on and oftentimes their businesses you visited or you, you might even know the owner of one of them, which yeah. has been the case yeah. in a couple of situations. So then you have, you know, a personal connection that you guys actually share. And it just seemed to be super successful. I've been finding as I'm moving further away from my town, Bellingham, further south into Seattle, um, the responses are fewer and farther between, but they're also bigger businesses. So yeah, yeah. Um, there's a trade off there, but you still can, you know, you can still use that you're living in the same state. I've spent plenty of time in their city. I, I've lived there at times. So it's uh, it's been proven been proving to be successful in that sense and in the past attempts i would just pick the major cities in the u.s and start that way and yeah, yeah. this time around it's been a lot different and not only have i signed clients but i've also just had plenty of conversations with interesting people and um you know who knows what that'll foster in the future Totally. And the thing I love about that is you've sent now hundreds of these and you're honing it with every one you send, with every response you get or don't get, you're learning something so that once you've kind of like, you know, really gone through your local area and you do start maybe branching out to some of the bigger cities again, you've got hundreds of you know pieces of feedback with which you can say, OK, here's what I need to tweak. Here are some of the things that work. Here are some of the things that I didn't that didn't yeah. do. So when you're reaching out to people that are maybe getting more inquiries, it gives you a leg up because you've gone through this so many times. And so I just kind of yeah, love that approach absolutely. you took. Um, absolutely. So with all that to say, you know, for this person that's, you know, sitting here, they're, you know, thinking about maybe joining Location Rebel, they're thinking about like, you know, am I a scam? Is this for real? Is it worth the investment? Um, is there any advice you would give to that person? Have you found that the course was worth it for you? What's been your experience there? Yeah, I would totally suggest it to anybody, especially considering, you know, it's, it's you and Liz running the operation. So if there are questions, concerns, whatever they may be, you send an email and that's how we connected initially was I sent totally. some email about something and, and you answered and that was a, a bit of a surprise and also very different than, you know, what you get with a lot of online businesses. Um, so anybody, you know, who's has reservations about, you know, whether it's legitimate or not, first I'd actually say check out the, the free content because you can yeah. tell about your guys' blog and the amount of videos you put out that you're not really holding much back. Totally. I think the, the best part about the Academy is it organizes all of that information and then gives yep. you more on top of it. And, um, and, you know, writing might not be for everybody, but I think you say it a lot in your content. Like if you can string, you know, sentences together and, and write, you know, if you've written a school paper successfully, then there's room for you on the internet as a writer. And it's a skill like anything else. So you can definitely improve it. But then the really cool thing that I'm excited to get into once I, once my boss allows me <laughs> is <laughs> all the other blueprints that are available there as well. You know, the, the one I'm most excited about is the hobby hacking, which is, you know, I have my own brand idea and I have an idea of where I want to take things. And so I'm, I'm pumped to get into that as soon as the, the bridge business is in full swing. Dude, well, I'm excited to help you get to that point as well. And one of the things you just mentioned, which I, I feel like is a good point to bring up is you're like, a lot of the content is already out there. It's like a lot of that content I use in my YouTube videos, we talk about on the blog. And my goal is basically to have 70 to 80% of my content available for free. And then you yeah. get into the course, you get that extra 20% that ties it together. But the, the reason the Academy I think is so valuable is because it does package it all in a way. So you're not having to like bounce between a bunch of different videos or a bunch of different blogs. It's like, here's where you start. Here's what you do next. Follow this path and you will see success. And then yeah. you add in the accountability aspect of it and the, you know, the community aspect of it. And that's where kind of all the magic happens. And in, in my opinion, that's, and it seems like that's going to work for you as well. I agree. I, um, with the forum and the community, I, at the beginning of the year when I started and then drifted away, I had joined a a group that that were they were treating it kind of as a writing mastermind or yeah. or a, an accountability group uh, within the community. So there were four or five members who um, got together on a weekly basis and you know just kept each other on track. And 
if I had have continued with that group, I probably would have stayed on track. So yeah, funny how that works. You learn, you learn the lessons along the way, and you generally learn them the hard way. But it's uh, it's also a part of the whole journey. Awesome. Well, I've seen firsthand like how far your writing has come just in the last year since you've been like digging into it. Like your writing's continued got better. You've like done some excellent writing work for us, updating some of our location rebel blog posts. Uh, for people that are watching this, whether they're thinking about joining or not, or maybe even thinking about hiring a writer. How can people find you? If they have questions for you, want to hire you, how can they get a hold of you? So I created my website as I was uh, instructed, and it's, <laughs> I've got a long name, man. It's www.mcahillmanchester, C A H I L L M A N C H E S T E R dot com. So that's my personal portfolio um, and a little bit more about me. I'm actually in the process of revamping that uh to you know share more of who i am and really help me to stand out a little more because that's one thing i found as i'm reaching out to everybody is there's definitely a a generic template and a generic language that's being used and i that's one thing i've learned along the way is i want to you know stand out and and make it a little bit different and more personal so totally uh, the site is there right now and it, it looks very good, but it'll it'll be looking better in the next couple months as well. All right. Well, I'm excited to see it. Thank you so much for one, being part of the community and two, just taking a little bit of time to tell your story. I know like it's one thing to hear it from me, but I've been doing this for a long time now. And I think the most useful thing is for people that are in your shoes where you were a year ago or even six months ago to be able to hear the stories from real people. That's like, no, I, I did this. I tried some yeah. other things that didn't really work, but once you commit, like you can really have success with it. So um, cool. I just appreciate you taking the time to share that. And I'm excited to see the new site and see where you take things from here and help you with your hobby hacking site when the time's right. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, man. I, I agree. And uh, before I signed up, I think I watched every single one of these types of videos that you've put out there. So they're definitely helpful. And uh, hopefully this one can be helpful as well. Good. Well, I'm excited that we were able to make you one of them and uh, we'll go from there. So. Thank you guys yeah. for watching. If you have any questions about Location Rebel Academy, starting your business, anything else, hit me up at Sean, Sean at locationrebel.com. Drop a comment below. I'm easy to get a hold of. And uh, hopefully see you in the academy, and we'll talk to you soon.